Good morning, guys. So uh, I want to share three Blitz games with you that I played consecutively this morning, just for a, just for fun warm up um, to get the day going. Big day. Got my first over the board game later on. Um, so interesting that all of these three games shared a similar pattern. That I think in each of them, at some point, I fall behind the material, but then also manage to spot opportunities. So I think that that ability, and there's something really, really coming through in chess for me at the moment, which is, um, and it should really, it, it almost like sums up everything on the checklist in a way, which is what is most critical in this situation? Is it your own king safety? Is it defense? Is it, you know, attacking? Is it a weak square, a weak pawn, a weak file, right? That kind of thing. It's like, what does this game hinge on? Um, and that's been coming through this week. Uh, Craig analysed a couple of my games in our advanced session this week, which was very, very useful. And so that is definitely coming out, right, for me. So, and sometimes, like a game I shared yesterday, I missed a mate and one, right? What is, what is most critical in chess is getting the best result you can, yeah? And if it's finishing the game with checkmate, you should finish it with checkmate. Anyway, in these three games, I do a bit better. So, game number one. And we have the Nimzovich defence. Now, I'm not very familiar with this. And it's annoying. So, I grab the centre with d4. And then black plays d5. And I'm trying to think, what is this like? You know, I, I really... I don't, I don't get it. I don't see how it transposes into anything else. It says it's like the Scandinavian variation, as though I'd played this. And then, so I guess it's actually, it's a bit like a Black Mardima declined with Knight out here. Hmm. And with the Black Mardima, I would play Knight C3. Uh, and I do play Knight C3. Apparently the best moves are either E5 or E takes D5. There you go. But we'll see what happens, because what happens is, black takes, I recapture, and then look at this pawn. Suddenly there's two attackers on it, right? So my opponent gets a swift early freebie. Attacking the queen, well, there's tension between the queens, it's also attacking the knight. What do you do? Well, apparently, I had a quick look at this, the best move is bishop d3, because it develops... It solves your problems. It defends the knight. It blocks the queen. It develops a piece. That's what I should have done. I traded queens. And now I'm in kind of gambit mode. Now it's like, okay, I'm still, I've still got the white pieces. I've still got the initiative. But I've also got the threat of a king rook fork on here. So what on earth do you do? Bishop d3 now. I find the move defending the pawn. Bishop comes out here to attack my knight. I develop and attack black's knight. Takes and takes. Right, now. Now we have an important imbalance in the game. Okay? I'm also ready to castle, which is not a bad thing. Put my rook on a completely open file. That's in my favour. Um, but I also have the bishop pair. So I want to hang on to this bishop pair. Black castles first, I castle. I have two attackers on this knight. The knight's got to get out of dodge or, yeah, in this case, get defended. So e5, not a bad move, gets some control over the centre. I retreat my bishop now, which is interesting because in a way I'm opening up to this. Um, he doesn't take the bishop, he develops his other knight, I develop my knight, so yeah. Oh yeah, this is, my, this is the idea, this is the purpose of this move, right? I need to get this knight out. Um, but I guess my knight could have gone to here, but it looks kind of awkward. But then, I mean, this isn't too bad. This isn't too bad. But I was thinking, knight out here, let's get rid of this knight and try and trade off. Okay, so knight here, he takes, I recapture. Still have the bishop pair, nice open board. Okay, so being one pawn down isn't a terrible disadvantage. We trade rooks. He plays bishop to defend the pawn on e5. I attack this pawn now. Now my opponent is playing really quick. 
We're this deep in the game and he's used 30 seconds of his five minutes. And this is just a mistake. He pushes a6 for reasons unknown. It maybe he's trying to stop me from going here and covering that square, but he hangs a pawn on f7. So now we are equal for the time being. He attacks my bishop, I retreat with check. King moves. I push. Okay, he pushes a pawn. Now, what's undefended? That's undefended. Okay. Um, I retreat my bishop now looking at this spare pawn. So I, I'd love to expose this king. Now he brings in a knight attacking my completely undefended pawn, but also double attacking my defended pawn. So just seeing that something is defended isn't enough, right? Because if it, I, I just didn't consider this move. We'd attack both pawns. So I hit the knight. He takes. Um, and then there's an important question. Do I take and give up the bishop pair for the ending? Probably not a good idea. Or do I um, do something else? So I decide here to grab the pawn on a6 and let him take this one if he wants. He does. So now I'm a pawn down again, but I have technically two pawn islands, whereas my opponent has three pawn islands, right? Plus I have the bishop pair. I need to make it count. Also, we have to notice these pawns and the bishop all on dark squares leaves the light squares somewhat vulnerable. And this is important. Retreat the bishop, attack another pawn. Now he attacks my bish, so I'm attacking this, but now this is a fork on bishop and pawn. And I can't go here to defend the pawn because of this pawn, which is annoying. So I, I counterattack his knight. So if you want to take my bishop, I'll take your knight. He doesn't take my bishop, he takes the pawn. Now this bishop is on prees. So I retreat. He pushes the pawn to safety. He's now two pawns up. I attack the knight a second time. So I've got now a rook and knight on there. Knight retreats. I attack the rook. Okay, I'm down to 1 minute 11 here. He retreats. Now where would you put your bishop? e4. Actually that hangs it. Completely hangs it. I'm thinking I'm attacking his rook and covering this. He could simply take it with the knight. He misses it. What a jelly head, right? <laughs> there we go. There you go. First game of the morning. Uh, so bishop c6. And I'm thinking about at least taking some squares away from this king. He pushes a pawn. I hit rook and knight. He comes back counter hitting the bishop. And what would you play here? Okay. This is where I smell blood. Pause if you need to. Okay, what I see is bishop takes knight. And I think this is a, a forced mate, actually. Bishop takes knight. I'm two pawns down. If he recaptures, which he does, rook h8 is, mate, is, uh, is check. And he can't go here because of my cunningly positioned bishop. He can't stay on the back rank. He has to go here. He only has one square. And then rook a1. Sorry, rook a8, defended by the bishop, is checkmate. Beautiful, unstoppable mate there. Um, and with 3 minutes 28 on the clock, my opponent is left with egg on his face. Okay, so that's game number one. Quite pleased with that. Let's go to game number two. All right, so here my opponent's rated 13-11. I now have the black pieces. e4, e5, knight 3, knight c6. As normal, we have a scotch. I take the pawn. The most common move here is knight takes, in which case I go for this Steinitz variation with queen h4, leading to lots of fun and games. But we don't get that. We get my nemesis, the Scotch Gambit. Now, I used to play the Scotch Gambit, and I had a good record with it. And it's very, very unpleasant. So, the problem here is that the knight is free to come in here and attack f7, as is the bishop. Right, um, you've got like h6 is a bit of a timid move. f6, also not very nice. 
it opens up the diagonal towards the king. So here I play um, bishop c5, which takes us into the Haxo gambit. And this is actually the variation I used to play, because this is very common, that the bishop will come out to this square. And then c3 follows. Now, I know not to take c3. If you take here, you get bishop sack on f7, king takes, queen comes in, now here, with a fork on the king and this bishop, right? And it's just, I've, I've won a bunch of games that way, so I know not to take there. The move I play here is knight g6 to defend this pawn in the event of this knight deciding to come in and cause trouble. Um, and white here snatches off my, my knight, which I'm not unhappy about. Yes, it means I've got isolated pawns on this side, but by the same token, he's pushed c3. And that means he's unlikely to put his king there on the queen side. He's more likely to go here. And can I make use of this semi-open g-file? Well, we shall see. So takes, uh, I can't recapture, but we are actually equal in material right now. Okay. However, white has a lovely strong center. Two nicely developed pieces. Um, yeah, I've, I've got him in check, but that check is not too difficult to block. He plays knight c3. Right, now d6. So I'm getting ready to develop my bishop, probably to there with a pin. Develop my queen and castle long. Queen comes out. Uh, and this is a tricky move to explain. I mean, pinning my knight. So all I could think it of is, is planning on pawn to d5 attacking the pin piece, which kind of makes sense. So I grab his knight with check, pawn takes, and now simply bishop to d7 means that if my knight moves, it comes with a discovered attack on the queen. Um, he brings his bishop into place. I develop my queen, now attacking this pawn, with the threat of check again, which would either mean his king has to move or the bishop retreats, which would also stop him from castling, because his king would then be the only defender of the bishop. So he castles straight away. I kick the bishop. I decide that's the best thing to do. He doesn't have a dark squared bishop, so actually moving this pawn onto a light square isn't too much of a weakness for me, and I still think I can castle long. So he retreats his bishop, and now is it time to use my discovery? So I figure, well, I can't take this pawn because queen takes. That's not good. I could come here. So what I'm thinking is now, probably rook g8 at some point is going to be played. I've got the option of bishop h3 in combination with rook g8, which... Um, threatens like, you know, bishop takes here, or even rook takes with check. Uh, lots of unpleasantness about that, but this knight is doing a good job. So what I decide is, I want to get rid of that knight. So that's what's critical in this position for me. If I'm gonna win this game, I might castle. I want to bring my rook here, and then try and use my queen and my bishop to checkmate my opponent. Now, so I wanna get rid of the knight. So knight e5, I'm forking knight and bishop. Now what I expect is, and obviously I'm also attacking the queen, right? But there's one move here that ties everything together, right? He can defend the knight, not just with the pawn. He can defend the undefended bishop. He can move his queen back to d1. My opponent doesn't do that. My opponent has only spent a minute 13 so far. For some reason... Place queen c2, which is just baffling. So I take the knight, he recaptures with g. Happy days, right? Now, in I go with the bishop straight away, okay? In fact, so, let's calculate this through because it wasn't straight away. I thought about this for 20 seconds, okay? So we're thinking about ideas like queen here, check. Queen here, king goes there, right? Um, and then how do we continue? I can't take this pawn yet with my queen from there. 
Right, if I play rook here, king goes there. Then I play queen here, but then he's got rook here. You know? Oh, then I could... Now, I can't take the rook because he's got another rook defending it, you see? But then I see this. Bishop here attacks the rook. Right? And if he wants to save the rook, then this is going to be an unstoppable mate. Right? I think here he has to play king here. But he doesn't. He moves the rook. And then queen g5 check. He can't go here because of the bishop. There's only one move. He'd have to go into the corner. And then that would be checkmate. Really, really nice finish. And I was proud of the way that I, I got to here from this point, really, deciding that I had to remove this knight. But removing the knight and, I mean, my opponent just handed me that one. You know? So if he'd have gone here, I'd have taken the knight anyway. He'd have recaptured with the queen, probably castles. But I am then using all of my bits to try and attack here as well. So it would have been interesting, but yeah, really, really nice little finish there. Okay, and the final one. My opponent's 13-12. I've got the black pieces again, and we have the three knights. So here I'm playing the Winnower defense. Not the strongest in the world, but it fits the pattern that I've been playing against the, um, the Italian, the Spanish, the Ponziani. You can, you can play this f5 move. So he takes. And now, in many of these openings, if white takes here, you push on and attack this knight. In the winnower, you can't do that because he's got a knight on c3. The knight would just snatch the pawn. So here I decide to push d5. There's no threat of queen h5 check because the knight's in the way. So d5. He pushes d3, opening up this bishop, but slightly cramping this one. And now knight f6. Good general purpose move, right? And that I've also got a discovery now on this pawn. He develops his bishop to its only square, because he wants the castle. I grab the pawn. So now look at this situation. I'd like this, right? I've got a stronger center, okay? I've given up my f pawn for his e pawn. I've got three pieces developed, and you can't really call that bishop very developed, right? I think black is better here. Castles, bishop d6, again lining up against my opponent's side of the board. Bishop out here, and now I think a key move. So I'm gonna take a slug of t. What's critical in this situation? I want to win the game. I've got four minutes to do it. Again, I want to open up the g-file. The king has castled. Right? I have my target. I know where my target is. So I play queen d7 because I want him to take this knight. And he obliges. He takes the knight. G takes. Now I have a really good center. Okay. Plus, so now my missing pawn is the g pawn. There's no Gary. Right? So again, I'm threatening rook g8, etc., etc. He grabs the free, the free pawn here. I missed it. All right? With bringing my bishop out, I undefended the pawn. Never mind, doesn't matter. But he, he is actually also threatening now this, which does matter. So, castles, get out of that. He grabs another pawn. I'm like, I don't care. These pawns are in my way. This is what I'm realizing, yeah? These pawns, getting rid of these pawns is doing me a favor, thank you very much. Queen g7. Knight comes round now attacking my queen, also threatening to come back to g3 and shutting the tortoise shell. Now, I push forward. He now comes up with a good move. Knight to h4 with a discovered defense on this knight by queen and bishop. So hitting the queen again, I nudge forward again. He takes my bishop. That's annoying, right? I grab it. Queen now comes forward. Bishop is defending this. Queen comes forward to here. Why? What's the queen doing? I can't see a way for her to trade herself off. She, she's not coming down this diagonal. I don't really get that move. Just connecting the rooks. Anyway, so rook h to g8. Knight now comes back. And yeah, this looks like a pain. 
So I drop my, drop my queen back anyway. This effectively pins the knight, because the knight is preventing mating one. And now is it time for our old friend Harry? In fact, here, I could have just grabbed this pawn, could I not? With tempo on the queen. Uh, I don't. I send in my knight to d4. Um, yeah, so I clearly I just missed that little tactic. But again, that's removing one of my opponent's pawns. And your, your own pawns, when you want to attack a king, here's my king, right? When you want to attack a king, your own pawns can be a real hindrance because you can't capture them. These ones you can capture. These ones you can't. You can't capture your own pawns. Not for white, anyway. So he hits my knight. I take out his bishop because, hmm, ain't no because really. Why did I take out his bishop? With check, queen takes, okay, no, no real logic behind that that I can see. And he's starting his queenside pawn assault and now up comes Harry. Ah, right, I think that's the thing, okay. Yeah, I want to push Harry, but he has bishop takes defended by the knight. That's the problem. That's why I wanted to attack the bishop, right? Get rid of the bish. Also got ideas now, push this pawn, eliminate knight maybe, right? But come across there, just, just you know, defend the pawn. Why not? Line it up with the major piece, why not? Right, he pushes, it's Harry time. Queen takes Harry. Queen takes d3. Okay, I saw that. Check. We trade queens. Okay, and we are in an ending, boys and girls. We're in an ending and I'm two pawns behind. I've got 2.31 on the clock. Uh, my opponent's got 2 minutes 15. I want to save my bishop. It's a wide open board, lots of open lines. If I'm going to have any chance in this game, um, I'm going to need that bishop in the ending. Much better than a knight on a board like this. Now this knight is actually causing a lot of problems for my bishop because it's guarding a lot of squares that my bishop might like to go to. So um, rook g5 hit the knight, knight moves. Okay. Now this is looking very, very good for white. Now if, you're, if you were white in this situation, let's just flip the board, right? You're white in this situation. What's your strength? You know, thinking about what's critical in a position what should white be doing here? Right, you look where you look at it, you look at pawn structures. Three and a one against three and a three. Yes, these are the king's bodyguard. But I would say when you get into the end game, these pawns around the king here, they change uh, mode. This is, this is white's strength. Apart, it, let's say he didn't have these two pawns, right? He wouldn't be stronger. Right? His strength is his two pawns up. And the, those pawns are in this set of three. Yeah, this one might be able to eliminate the F pawn. But Gary and Harry, white Gary and white Harry, are white strength. So what he needs to be thinking about, I think, strategically, is he's got to push these pawns up the board. Supported by all of his pieces. Tie these together. Not hard to do. Right, decide whether you want to stick them on light squares to make them invisible to the bishop or dark squares to, you know, close things down for the bishop, doesn't really matter. Um, but that's what you should be doing. Anyway, so I play bishop here, defense pawn, now that the knight's moved. Rook across to d1, if you like. Um, this is kind of a waiting move now. He forks rook and bishop. I drop back, second defender, take with the pawn, okay? Now I've lost my bishop. This is terrible. He pushes forward, I push forward, attacking this whole line of pawns. So if he pushes, he's gonna lose his central pawn. That's not good. So rook back to c1, defends. King up. Rook up. Okay. And my opponent plays quite badly from here. So, but he's down to one minute 15. So now I've got, I've managed to get a second attacker on g2. Now, he, this is why he really should be thinking about getting one of his own rooks onto the second rank, just to defend against things like this. Okay, anyway, so pushes, 
I take the check. And now, we dance. Okay, lots of checks. I can't just take this pawn because it doesn't come with check. Now my opponent's got ideas, right? Um, so I decide to take here, takes and give in an, another check. I want to avoid repetition, okay? We're both just under a minute on the clock. King comes back, okay? And now what I realize is, if I could get this move in, I might be able to win this rook. But also, if I could get this move in without him catching my rook, it's actually mate. Okay, it's a ladder mate. This rook doesn't mean anything. So I play now rook across to a2, thinking that actually this is mate if I get to play it, right? My opponent takes the pawn. I recapture. I could even have gone king d7. Okay, king comes back here. I grab the pawn. We now have equal material. We now, on 41 and 42 seconds, he plays his rook here with check. I dodge out the way. He pushes his rook forward and checkmate like that, right? Did I deserve to win that game? Hell no. But am I pleased that I did? Hell yeah. You know, this is, this is chess. We're all prima donnas, you know? No, this is chess. The object of the game is to win the game. I didn't play particularly well in that one. Um, game two, very happy. Game three, sucked, but, you know, did what I had to do. And that's what's important. You know, sometimes you, your opponent who may be beating you, you may be, you know, lying on the ground with his foot on your chest, but suddenly exposes a bit of flesh. And you've seen that, that first fight scene in The Last Samurai. That's what we're thinking about, right? You know, he's, he's there, he's beaten, he grabs the end of a spear and, you know, good film, by the way, watch it. Anyway, thought I'd share those with you. <sighs> I'm preparing myself now for quite a relaxing day, hopefully, get ready for my game this evening, wish me luck, I'll see you soon.